All right, moving forward. Now you can also use your calculator to approximate the sine, cosine, and tangent of an angle. The thing is you want to make sure your calculator is on degree mode. Okay, so all you got to do is when you go to your calculator, click mode, and a whole bunch of options should pop up. D, E, G should be highlighted, okay? If it's not, all you have to do is click enter on degree, and you'll be in degree mode. You'll get completely different answers if you're not in degree mode. So here it says, find the ratios for the following angles. Round your answer to four decimal places. So it's just as simple as you think. Go to your calculator, open it up, and you type in sine of 74. Now the sine button is located two buttons above your seven button. Okay, so all you do is you hit sign, you type 74 and enter, and you'll get your answer. You're around the four decimal places, so this is 0.9613. Cosine is right up two buttons above your eight button, so you'll do cosine of 55 in your calculator. Close off those parentheses. It's good to get in that habit. So when that parenthesis pops up, close it off. And you'll have 0.5736. Tangent is located two buttons above your nine button. So when you type it in, tangent, 32, close parenthesis, you'll have 0.6249. Pause this video. Do it for the rest of these. Did you get these values? I hope so. Now, if you've got um, radicals instead, that means that you need to be on classic. So you need to click your mode button, go down to where it says classic and math print on the same line, and click enter on classic so that it's highlighted. So not only do you have to be in degree mode, but you want to be in classic mode as well so you can actually get the decimal for all of these uh, values. Now, we use trig to find the measure of a side, also an angle, okay? For triangles that don't have um, like 30, 60, 90, or 45, 45, 90. And there are, a few, there are two terms that you guys need to be associated with when you are solving certain lengths. The first one is angle of elevation. The angle of elevation is the angle that your line of sight makes with an object above you. Okay, so look at this picture right here. You have a family that's standing 50 feet from a lighthouse. The angle of elevation from their eyes to the top of the lighthouse is 38 degrees, okay? So when they're first looking at the lighthouse, they're looking straight ahead. But when they turn their eyes up to see the top of the tower, they are basically forming an angle of elevation, okay? So it always comes from some horizontal line looking up at something. And that forms your 38 degree angle, which is your angle of elevation. So then to solve, to find how tall the lighthouse is, we're basically looking for this length right here, which is x. Yes, all of these will form a right triangle. Now to actually find x, we're going to use trig. So we need to figure out which trig ratio are we going to use. Are we going to use sine, are we going to use cosine, or are we going to use tangent? Well, let's look at the sides that we have. If this is my 38 degree angle, and x is opposite of that angle, this is my opposite side. 50 is my adjacent side because it's right next to the 30 degree angle. It's not my hypotenuse because that's the side that's across from my 90 degree angle. So which trig ratio has opposite and adjacent in it? If you guess tangent, then you're right. So you set it up. The tangent of your angle, okay? The tangent of our angle equals our opposite side over our adjacent side. Well, our angle was 38 degrees, so I'm going to plug that in. Our opposite side was x. Our adjacent side was 50. So to solve for x, all we have to do is multiply both sides by 50, and we'll find our answer. So we'll have 50 times the tangent of 38 degrees equals the height of the lighthouse. We go to our calculator and we type it in exactly how we see it. 50 times the tangent of 38, close parenthesis, and we'll get 
about 39.1 feet. That's how tall the lighthouse is. Now your angle of depression is the opposite of your angle of elevation. So it's an angle that your line of sight makes to an object below you. So say you got this man standing at the top of the building, he's looking out, like, oh, look at all the birds. But then he notices a car down the street. So when he looks down, he forms his angle of depression, which is 48 degrees. Now, if he's standing, or sorry, um, if the man's standing at the top of the building and looking at an object that's 100 feet away from the base of the building, and his angle of depression is 48 degrees, we need to figure out how tall is this building. There's your right angle, and that's what you're looking for. Now you're probably like, wait, the 48 is not inside the triangle. Well, look here. This horizontal line and the line that makes the road, those are parallel lines, which means that um, alternate interior angles are congruent. This angle down here is 48 degrees. Does that work every time? Yes. Yes, it does. So now we're back to where we were with the other problem. How can I set this up to solve? Which trig ratio am I going to use? Well, 48 degrees is my main angle. X is opposite of that. 100 feet is adjacent. So the trig ratio I'm going to use is tangent. So I set it up. The tangent of my angle, which is 48, equals my opposite side over my adjacent. Now I just have to solve for x. Multiply both sides by 100. And so 100 times the tangent of 48 equals x. I go to my calculator. I type it in, and I find out that my building is about 111.1 feet. And that's it. Okay? What I want you to do now is I want you to work on the rest of the problems that are a part of the notes. All right? I should be back by the time you get done with this video. So if you have any questions, please make sure you ask me when I get back.